Welcome back to Morgan's video blog, Morgan's online blog in video format. Today, I'm here to share with you, they want what? The difference between blurbs, queries, and synopses. Now, all industries have their own specialized terms, and even inside an industry, different people can want different things when they say a particular word. In the publishing world, you hear a lot about blurbs, queries, synopses, and more. Now, I can't tell you what all agents and publishers and readers are looking for, but I can point you in the right direction. So first off, let's start with the high level distinctions. Before we delve into the nitty gritty, let's talk about the big picture. Now, for the most part, blurbs are what you find on the back of the cover of a novel or at least what you should. I'm not really sure about this whole trend of big name author quotes enjoying this book without any mention of like genre or anything. Um, uh, blurb is also what you see when you're scrolling through Facebook and you see an ad pop up or Amazon, whatever. So queries. Now, if you've been to my vlog before, you should probably know what these are, but um, these are what you send a literary agent uh, that you're hoping for representation from. A literary agent will hopefully help you find and negotiate with your publisher and get you the big bucks or the medium bucks, some kind of box, right? So, and synopses, synopses are for agents, but also for publishers and they're to tell them how the plot progresses. Three different things aimed at three different, maybe not totally different audiences, but you know, trying to do three totally different things, all describing the same story. But they go about it in very different ways and I see them confused a lot, hence this post. So first up, let's talk about the blurb. Blurbs are your seasonings without much substance. Blurbs push the secretive, trying to give away only enough to entice the reader to pick up the novel. This is where you're gonna see all the cliches pop out. A man on the run, a woman with a deadly secret, will it come back to bite them? Rhetorical questions in, qu in queries are a no-no. In blurbs, sure. In moderation, all things in moderation, you do not want a blurb that is just 12 rhetorical questions. So rein it in a little, but have fun. Um, blurbs should spark interest, but shouldn't give anything away. Next up, the query. Queries are nicely seasoned, but definitely have substance. Um, as I may have mentioned once or twice, uh, queries should be told in third person, present tense, which is a little weird. They should be about two paragraphs, no more than four if you've got like multiple points of view kind of thing, but your query needs to fit on one page. So 250 words is totally what you're going for, including the bio and the stats paragraph. Um, and they should take the reader to the first major plot point. I mean, clearly you're going past the inciting incident, but you wanna set up the story. You're not trying to tell the whole story here though. And they do not give away the ending. Now, how is this different from the blurb? Well, in a query, the agent wants specifics. Readers are looking for ways your book is like things they've already enjoyed. Agents are looking for ways your book is different from what's already out there. And how do queries differ from synopses? Well, a query is focused on the main character or characters, who they are, what they want, and what stands in their way. The stakes are the entire point of the query. Now, some agents like a query letter that starts off with, um, a log line or a pitch, a single sentence, try to keep it to two lines or less, um, that almost summarizes the story or the feel of the story. 
uh, these log lines or pitches overlap a lot with the so-called elevator pitch, see that word again, pitch, um, and work best with high concept novels. Like a friend of mine is querying Alice in Wonderland meets the Jungle Book. Good luck. Um, <clears throat> and these are what you'll see on your Twitter feed during a Twitch pitch party or what you can say when someone says, so what's your novel about? They, they don't want the nitty gritty. They want the one line answer that might entice them to ask more. So other agents, however, prefer that you skip the log line entirely, leave the stats and stuff for the end and tell them about the story immediately. Um, uh, so you want to give them the query, the meat of the query about the story. Then you give them the brief stats paragraph where you give the genre, the word count rounded to the nearest thousand, um, unless it's picture books, uh, and any novels or writers that you want to compare your work to or comps, plus your brief bio. Your bio should be shorter than the story part of the query. You're querying the story, not you. I know it's really easy to take it personally. I know it's hard and sometimes you've done a lot, but sometimes y you haven't and it's just filler. And sometimes you need to focus on what most promotes the story you're trying to sell now. So if you have no publishing credits like me, do what I do, keep it brief and simple. I go with, I write from my lair in the DC metro area. Occasionally I'll add a hobby or if my reading shows that the agent has similar interests or my hobbies are something that's in the story, then I'll mention them. Um, just remember who the query is for and what it's supposed to do and you'll be in good shape. Next up, the synopsis. Now, synopses have plenty of substance, but they're light on the seasoning. The synopsis is all business. Who does what where? And you can give motivations, you can add a little description, but you need to detail the major plot points and completely give away the ending. If you have enough space, detail the subplots as well. Now, different agents or publishers ask for different length synopses. Anything over one page is single spaced. So, well, okay, short little rant. Hence my insistence that the two page synopsis does not actually exist. It's a one page synopsis that's double spaced. Anyway, back on track. <laughs> so, um, Typically what I've seen is either a one page synopsis, a three page synopsis, or a full synopsis, which I usually like to keep about maybe five pages. So I have three versions of my synopsis. Um, and they're just sitting there ready to go when I'm querying. To write my synopsis, I often just build my query up, adding in the ending and well, for the one page synopsis. And so I add in the ending and I make sure to cap locks my first mention of each proper noun, like the name or the place. Um, and for my full synopsis, I write one to three sentences uh, describing each chapter. And then I trim it down, smooth it out, edit it for clarity. And my three page synopsis is usually my one page meets my five page edited until they meet in the middle. <laughs> so the three page is usually my strongest query or synopsis, clearly not a query. That's the whole point of this video is to explain the difference. Um, but yeah, I usually prefer my three page synopsis. The synopsis is there to show your pacing and your plotting, often delving into character development as well. It needs to be coherent and clear, more than it needs a strong narrative voice or descriptive imagery. If you can do both, more power to you, but you gotta focus on what it's there for, plotting and pacing. So if your query is strong enough, the agent or publisher is gonna wanna look at your synopsis to learn more. Make sure it gives them more information. 
by keeping in mind exactly what each is for, you'll soon find that you too can keep blurbs, queries, and synopses straight in your head. If you enjoyed this post, feel free to share it with your friends, subscribe, donate, whatever you want to do, and tune in again next week for more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.